All right, folks, welcome back. So this is video number two in our sequence on uh, proving the existence and uniqueness theorem. So last time I outlined what uh, Picard's method was and why we should uh, consider it in the first place. Remember that it's because we are uh, trying to find solutions of an initial value problem uh, and reframe what those solutions look like as fixed points of a of an integral uh, operator. And this is the basis for Picard's method, that we can start to iterate some function, and we're going to start with the zero function. We're going to start with the zero function. Uh, and this will hopefully get us in the right direction and show us that we can actually find solutions to, uh, to arbitrary differential equations in this way. So what I'd like to do here is start answering these questions, or at least show that they have uh, they have solid answers, or they have they have answers for a specific uh, example, just to show that there is validity. There there is there is a valid point to uh, you to using this iteration scheme. So let me go ahead and start with an equation that we'd like to solve. And this one is an equation that we actually do know how to solve. And this will be for y of 0 equals 0 as per the theorem statement and for Picard's iteration to work. OK, so we know the solution to this equation. We can compute it very quickly. This is a uh, separable differential equation. And if we integrate both sides, this winds up giving us one y plus 1 and then a t squared plus a c. So if I exponentiate both sides and then absorb a plus or minus sign into a constant, I wind up with uh, e to the t squared, and then I subtract the 1 off of both sides. So c, e to the t squared minus 1. Excellent. If I go ahead and use my initial condition, y of 0 then is going to give me c minus 1 equals 0, so c equals 1. So this is y of t equals e to the t squared minus 1. Awesome. This is something we will come back to, so don't forget about it. Here's what we're going to start with. We're going to go ahead and see what Picard's iteration does, or see how it works, and with any luck, show that this guy will converge to this starred solution. Let's begin. So, as per the iteration scheme, phi zero, our starting point is going to be the zero function. This is a, a continuous function, in fact, it's a smooth function, that satisfies this initial condition, right? If I plug in t equals 0, I will get 0. So this is our first approximation to a solution y. OK, what we're going to do first, phi 1 of t, as per this iteration scheme, I'm just going to it, uh, integrate this right-hand side, my rate function, when I plug in phi 0. So here's the deal. This becomes the integral from 0 to t of f of s by phi 0 of s. Remember, I'm using s's, so the applied mathematicians don't yell at me. Oh, or sorry, the pure mathematicians don't yell at me. The applied mathematicians couldn't care less. It's OK. Most, apply, most applied mathematicians. OK, I'll, yeah. don't, don't at me. OK, and the f here is the right-hand side. So this is f of t by y is 2t times y plus 1. And I'm going to go ahead and substitute uh, an s for the t's, so 2s, and a phi sub 0 for the y, so phi 0 of s plus 1, integrate ds. But phi 0, we know, is the 0 function. So this is just integrating 2s, which I can integrate as s squared, where s goes from 0 up to t. So this becomes t squared minus 0 squared, so just a plain old t squared. Wonderful. My first approximation, I'll just go ahead and rewrite it here. Phi 1 looks like t squared. Okay, So that is my first iteration. That is not going to be a solution to the differential equation, and you can verify that. If I use t squared in here, there is no way that a cubic is going to equal the derivative of a, of a uh, square function, which is a linear function. So definitely not a solution to the original differential equation. So what do I do? I keep on chugging here. I'm going to take my solution, or my approximation, phi 1, and substitute it now 
into this integral equation or into this integral operator. So this will be integral from zero to t of 2s times, now it's gonna be phi one of s plus one ds. So plugging that in, 2s times, okay, phi one is a t squared, or sorry, not t, we're substituting s's, s squared plus one ds, I expand that out, zero to t, uh, of 2s cubed plus 2s integrate ds, and I wind up with one fourth, actually, I'm not gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna, sub, uh, not gonna simplify it just yet, s to the fourth plus s squared from s goes from zero to t, so this is just gonna be two over four t to the fourth plus t squared. So phi two is gonna be a quartic polynomial Whoa, that is the funkiest looking T I've ever drawn. There we go. Oh, well, no, maybe that might be the funkiest T I've ever drawn. But here's the deal. Uh, I will rewrite this guy. 2 fourths T to the fourth, not squared, fourth plus uh, T squared. And here's my next iteration. Okay, so the question now is how many times do I have to iterate this guy before I start to get anywhere, before I start uh, homing in on some solution? Well, usually what happens in this point, if, at this point, if you're trying to do this by hand, is that you're trying to find some pattern in the fees. And we can keep going at this for a while before we start to see any uh, discernible pattern, but I'll do one more iteration just for the heck of it. And you know this, uh, I'm not gonna rewrite the entire thing. This will be uh, 2 fourths t to the fourth. This time I'm gonna go ahead and, no, I won't, I won't simplify it. I'm not gonna do it. 2 fourths t to the fourth. Uh, no, these are s's. These are s's. s to the fourth plus s squared ds. And I integrate this guy. Now, oh, there should be a plus one in here. Plus one ds. And then we go ahead and uh, continue solving this. So this would be what? Four over four s to the fifth plus two s cubed plus two s. Integrate that with respect to s and then pop in a t. So I wind up with 4 over 4 times 6, s, or this will be a t to the 6th, and then I'll wind up with a 2 over 4, t to the 4th, plus a t squared. Okay, great. So phi 4, or phi 3, excuse me, phi sub 3 then is this hextic or sextic, however you, uh, however you want to call it. This is a new polynomial that's supposedly trying to approximate our solution. And it's at this point where we start looking and trying to find patterns. What do we notice is the same and what changes between iterations? And I will note here that phi one lives inside phi two, and phi two lives inside phi three. It would stand to reason that if we continue this process, it might be a good idea to try to establish that phi sub n plus one of t is gonna be something plus the previous phi. It's not a bad guess, I and mean, you can actually prove that through induction. We're not going to, but here's the deal. If I were creative, and I like to think I am, we would be able to find some way of filling in that spot. And if I did actually reduce what we have so far, there would be a one half. And I'm gonna split this into two twos. So first two can uh, divide out uh, through the four or cancel with the four. Second two can cancel with the six. So I wind up with one over two times three. Hmm. If I did one more iteration, I bet you I'd also see a times four in there. And that's starting to look a lot like a factorial. And specifically, the thing I'd like to put in here uh, would be one over n plus one factorial times, or times two to the, uh, sorry, t to the two times n plus one. And that right now is just conjecture. Maybe that's what these terms look like. We would have to prove it through induction. But let's 
think what happens here if I take this guy and I push it off to uh, infinity, what happens to this function? Well, I'm just going to be adding more and more terms on it. So phi n is actually a partial sum. This goes where k goes from 0. Sorry, not from 0. k goes from, uh, from 1 up to n. And this will be of t to the 2k over k factorial. Right? I'm just adding more and more pieces. Right? So I'm just adding on more and more terms of that form, which is effectively what I get down here. Okay, so that, with any luck, as, uh, as n goes to infinity here, then we're going to go ahead and see this as a series, and we're going to name that guy phi without any subscripts. k goes from 1 to infinity, and that sure looks like a Taylor series to me if I've ever seen one. But it looks really, really close even if I take off my glasses here and kind of squint at it for a second. This is t squared to the k over k factorial. Man, that sure looks a lot like the exponential functions uh, Taylor series or the McLaurin series, depending on which sensibility you have. So this, oh, it looks really close. It looks really, really close to that. I'm missing a constant term. So what would happen if I put it in and then took it right back out? So I would start at zero. Well, let me just go ahead and write it. So plus one and then minus one. That would allow me to put these terms together into one series. And that would be exactly an exponential function. But I subtract one off of that. And if I'm taking clues from what I did earlier, that is exactly what happens when I substitute in t squared for the exponential function in the Taylor series. So sure enough, that is exactly e to the t squared minus 1. Check. So this is by no means a proof that uh, for, for the, the general existence of uniqueness theorem, but it is a really good proof of concept for, for how Picard's method should work. And we would like to be able to uh, do this in general for an arbitrary uh, differential equation when we don't know what the right-hand side looks like, when we don't know what this rate function looks like. So the last video in this series is going to be the proof. We're actually going to do this. Uh, we're actually going to do this for in full generality. But this is what uh, Picard's method looks like when you apply uh, when you apply it to a specific differential equation, a specific initial value problem. So feel free to go back and keep and watch through this video in in uh, shorter steps. Uh, but this is what you're going to have to do in general. You're going to have to look for that pattern and try to find a series solution for your differential equation which strangely enough is, is the topic in chapter five for this uh, particular